population is booming. Sydney, for instance, is set to top 5 million people next year, but it won't be the biggest city for long. Apparently, Melbourne will become the largest city in Australia from 2056 in terms of population, but neither of those capitals can lay claim to being the fastest-growing city in Australia. That title currently held by Perth, which has just passed 2 million. Brisbane and Adelaide aren't growing as fast as the rest of the country with the lack of sea changes heading to those areas uh, compared with previous years. So, will our health, education and public transport systems be able to cope with all of this? Social, social researcher Eliane Miles joins us uh, now with more. Well, thank you, Cameron. Well, it is interesting, in the last decade, we've added more people to Australia than ever before, and so by the end of this year, we'll reach 24 million, which is twice the population that we had in 1968. So um, in five years' time, if we look ahead to 2020, we'll be adding nearly an additional 2 million people to our population, which is the size of Canberra and Adelaide combined, just that, in five years alone. We already feel like our roads are being <laughs> pressured and transport systems. Do you think that, uh, that Australia has the infrastructure to cope, or the, at least the planning mechanisms to cope with this extra burden of people? Well, there's certainly um, planning going forward. The intergenerational report released by the government a few weeks ago um, highlights some of the, the needs, and certainly there is uh, definitely a lot of growing room for some changes to take place to respond to these uh, growth trends. And what's responsible for uh, this explosion of population? Is it predominantly birth rate or migration? Yeah, so 57% of our growth actually occurs through migration. So that is around 240,000 people every year. But that plus our natural increase, which is about 310,000 births every year, mm -hmm. with 150,000, minus 150,000 deaths, is about 355,000 people a year. So most of that is through migration. Where are these people coming from? That's right. Well, six of the top ten uh, migration countries for Australians not born here are actually in Asia, mm -hmm. but you've got top three being England, India and China. Okay, so let's talk about hospital, roads, uh, education, all of the normal sorts of things that you need to cope with, uh, with you know, keeping people happy and healthy and in, in the lifestyle that we're accustomed to. Uh, are, are things going to change? Are our cities going to continue to spread out or are they going to go up? What, what, what's the future look like? Yeah, sure. So nearly 80% of our population growth actually occurs in our capital cities. So traditionally, Australia hasn't grown by planting new cities but by building our existing ones so there's definitely going to be growth in both of the inner city where things are happening as well as the outer suburbs mm -hmm. um, so no doubt some of the things that we do see traffic congestion increase in house prices um, longer waits for public services those may continue to increase unless there are some drastic changes made. You mentioned house prices I can hear people who have not bought a house thinking oh no this is going to push it further out of reach do you think that's the case so we're going to have to adjust to a different style of uh, of accommodation or at least uh, thinking about our accommodation in different ways? Definitely. I think the traditional maybe Aussie dream of the quarter acre, uh, quarter acre block may no longer um, be viable going forward. Now the new um, housing approvals are around 423 square metres which is on nearly a, only a tenth of a quarter acre so perhaps the hills hoist the garden shed. Uh, a bit of g um, room for a game of, of cricket may no longer be the dream. We are seeing people um, downsizing and downshifting into smaller accommodation. Uh, just quickly as a woman who thinks about this type of thing all the time we all we're told that growth is good is it? Well, I certainly think Australia is a very attractive place to live. It, is, it can be a good thing in terms of our increasing cultural diversity, access to entertainment options and a rich lifestyle. So it's not all bad news, for sure. All right. Thanks, you, Eliane. What do you think about that, Deb?